Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation, and today we're going to be covering FOBs in RMC14. An FOB, or Forward Operating Base, is an essential logistical and strategic location in every marine operation. It's like the marine equivalent of a hive, with critical supplies flowing in and out of it. In theory, they could be anywhere in the map, but they are almost always on or near LZs due to the ease of access to supply that it would provide, along with a bunch of other benefits. FOBs also provide shelter to doctors, nurses, and other civilians that deploy to the field, as they are outright banned from heading outside of the FOB. The FOB is also responsible for ensuring the main force doesn't get outflanked or otherwise outmaneuvered, sweeping the position for flankers like lurkers or runners, or even the occasional ninja hive lord. For these facts, along with many others, the FOB can easily make or break an operation. This brings us to positioning. Ensuring the FOB is in a safe but also strategic location is important. Ideally, the FOB is placed in a spot that is both regularly traversed by marines, but not so close to the front line as to be encircled and completely crushed by Xenos, thus losing all of its assets. Good positions for FOBs would be places like LV624's LZ1, or Nexus, due to their decent enough pre-existing defenses, common traveling, and proximity to resupply. Bad positions for the FOB would be places like Hydroponics, or the Lake Shack and LV-624, due to their distance from resupply and general danger. The shack is also a bad spot due to how uncommon it's reversed to at all, even if it's right next to an LZ. It's also good to note that there's differences between the FOB and the field hospital. While Hydroponics, for example, is a terrible FOB position, it still often finds itself used as a field hospital, due to its proximity to the wounded, saving time, and potentially lives. Along with positioning, fortifications are just as, if not more important than where you place your FOB. In theory, any position would be good enough if you had enough metal. More often than not, this job is shoved on the combat technicians in a unit. This makes sense as their kit is well suited to the role and they'll often be the most experienced. Despite this, it's important to remember that the average rifleman can still chip in. Sandbags and other simple constructions can also be erected by most troops. So next time you're on FOB duty, try to give your contact a hand. When making cover, the main things to account for are capacity to block Xeno movement and your ability to shoot over it. The best barricades let you shoot at your enemies, as well as see them. Nothing is scarier to a Xeno than a bullet cratering at Mach 3 into their skull, and oftentimes a layer of suppressive fire is infinitely more effective than simply leaving a wall up. Some structures are also actively detrimental holes in your defense. Fences, for example, are in reality really flimsy and only take about 7 hits to completely break, making them unreliable and only good if you have no time to replace them. Walls can also be an issue at times, blocking sight into areas or preventing you from shooting at enemies. Doors are also infamous for causing trouble. Maps like Solaris can impede marines with access blocked doors, which also can't be shot through. All around, it's best to always evaluate how genuinely safe an area is. Finally, when you inevitably run out of supplies, it helps to try and scavenge for more. Some things can be deconstructed for more metal, for example, and oftentimes it may be littered around on the floor. Don't be afraid to ask some of the advancing squads to run back any scrap they find. You may find yourself putting up an extra barricade or two with some good on-site procurement. FOBs also generally have some etiquette involved with them. If you respect your FOB, it will respect you back. Just like how you wouldn't steal from a dementia-ridden grandmother, you wouldn't steal mats from an FOB supply without asking, or how you wouldn't throw a glass bottle on a homeless person, you wouldn't throw grenades into the FOB, shattering the barricades into pieces. Even little things like closing barricades behind you can have a critical effect in overall FOB health. A strong FOB means a strong supply line, and subsequently, a strong front. In a similar vein, as a squad lead, if you ever feel like the FOB team is woefully understaffed, you could always redirect your own combat text to help reinforce it. This of course should be communicated and taken into consideration properly. Offensive strategies can rely a lot on contact support, and it saves lots of confusion if you just ask whatever squad was assigned FOB duty if they need backup. Along with marines, you'll also see plethora of civilians in the FOB. The FOB will host these defenseless medical staff, who often lack the tools to combat backliners. In general, it's a good idea to defend these civilians. Attaching troops to escort them between buildings, for example, prevents kidnappings, on top of being very kind. Keeping your FOB clean and organized whenever possible is also 
greatly recommended. And they could do wonders for efficiency. A lack of clutter is also, from a personal perspective at least, calming and keeps Marines in a better state of mind. If you ensure an area is clean and comfortable, people will act clean and comfortable. Even something as simple as a cup of coffee could keep a Marine going and keep them motivated to keep fighting. In many cases, an FOB squad may struggle to spread out all their troops properly, putting too many in one spot and you leave your FOB vulnerable to flankers, leaving them all too spread out and you're vulnerable to defeat in detail. This is where organizing your troops can really pay off. On the lower interference end, simply putting your troops into buddy pairs can be potentially life-saving. A lurker can struggle greatly with kidnapping marines when they have adequate support, with a serving of lead by a battle buddy often being more than enough to keep a lurker at bay. On the higher end, you have label organization, in which a squad lead explicitly designates fire teams by hand using the use of a labeler. This can be mildly tedious, but can do potential wonders for both the fire team cohesion and the flexibility of a unit. If a backlighting Xeno is confirmed, for example, a squad lead could simply send off one of their fire teams and have the rest continue to defend the FOB. These teams could also be issued patrol routes, increasing the likelihood of flankers being spotted and subsequently rooted out. Organization is usually up to the squad lead. Some templates exist, but these aren't recipes. Organizing your squad in a way that helps patch the weaknesses in your defense is important, and it's just one thing that you could do to boost your chances. Finally, I'd like to go over some less used knowledge. Crayons, despite their absolute meme status, are fully capable of being a viable tool if Marines would stop treating them like memes. Their ability to mark the floor as of now is completely unique, and it gives them a genuine reason to be carried. Uses for this are potentially infinite, whether that be marking your firing lines or planting directions for other marines. Supply dumps are great, but distributing smaller supply dumps and checkpoints or other defensive areas around your FOB can be life-saving. Ensure that marines can last longer in a fight without needing to disengage for more ammo, or you can give them access to boosts like AP rounds on the spot for the event that heavier Xenos appear. This next bit is a new piece of tech, for me at least. But on maps where you could get remote controls, you could easily bolt doors closed or open as a rifleman. Using just an access configurator and a remote means that any door you could access already can be configured to your likely. And this allows for the creation of panic buttons, which could potentially save your life in a pinch. Throwing curveballs with FOV positioning is a really risky maneuver. It could throw off your marines, but it could also, in theory, throw off the Xenos just as much. They may expect a need to push LZ-1 on 624, for example, only to get a disappointing amount of picks as the FOBs get somewhere else entirely. But this could only last so long, and Xenos will adapt to their environment given new knowledge. Finally, just because a squad is initially assigned offensive duties, doesn't mean they'll need to fill these duties for the entire operation. A beaten up squad can be rejuvenated if they are given time to rest, and often, this is better than attaching them to another combat formation. Reeling back a decimated squad and assigning them FOB duty creates a double entendre of reinforcing the FOB and preparing the decimated squad for future encounters. Conclusion The forward operating base is important, critically so. Attacking the problem intelligently is how you solve it, and ultimately, doing so with that method ensures that the most marine lives will be saved. Operations can, and have, died by their FOBs, and like a stage crew in a play finds pleasure propelling a production to fruition, FOBers should find fulfillment in being the silent workhorses of their unit. FOB defense is always evolving, and things will change, new threats will emerge, but there's always need for people to stand behind a wall. As always, I hope you have a good day, and thank you for listening.